that breaks every yoke is that kind that brings anointing down and that anointing will come today in jesus name but you know look up here look up here i'm just trying to help you when the apostles sing and you criticize in your heart you close your own door that's about to open when the apostles sing and then you say but why is the apostle singing why doesn't he keep to his preaching and praying? We are the people supposed to do the singing. Well, when you come to do your singing, no door will open. But when you agree, when you understand, when you know that we are following the Bible, that this is Bible church, it's not a kind of, you know, all these uh, new generational church, Bible church. And we do what they did in Bible times. Then we're going to have the resort and we're going to have the miracle and the outbreak the open door they had in bible times we're going to have it i said we're going to have it i'm dividing the message to three points number one the power of prayer and praise before deliverance not after deliverance the power of prayer and praise the power of prayer and praise before deliverance. Number two, the pursuit of passionate preaching. The pursuit of passionate, passionate preaching after deliverance. Number three, the peril of perpetual prisoners after deliverance. The peril of the people that remain in a day when God is pouring, pouring out a spirit pouring out his power, pouring out the anointing and breaking yokes and destroying the works of the devil at such a time and in such a day, some people still remain bound. I pray it will not happen to you. I said it will not happen to you. I pray that this day of his power and this day of his authority and this day of open doors and this day of spontaneous miracle instant miracle i pray you receive your own and you'll come out of every bondage in jesus name we're looking at number one now number one is the power of prayer and praise before deliverance anybody can sing after the miracle has happened anybody can jump after the miracle has happened anybody can shout anybody can clap after the miracle has happened before it happens, when your feet are still in the stores, when the sickness is still there, when the imprisonment appears biting and terrible, and when evil men are waxing worse and worse, when the problems are increasing, when you can see that, that that's what brings miracle, not after, but before. Let's look at that again. I'm reading from verse 24. It says, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, the midnight of suffering, at midnight, the midnight of pressure, at midnight, the midnight of persecution, at midnight, when the forces of the magistrates were brought to bear upon them and they felt the pain they felt the agony at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard the prisoners were sleeping and they didn't worry about when they had to wake them up that's a good thing to wake people up prayer and singing to wake people up Shouting the praises of the Lord, singing the praises of the Lord to wake people up. That's a good thing. And then it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. It was, the singing was before that earthquake. The singing was before the opening of the door. The singing was before the deliverance. And then it says, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately and everyone's bands were loosed i want you to look at first chronicles second chronicles rather singing 
pray. Praising the Lord before the time of the miracle. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 3. Here we're told about Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat had some challenges. And a challenge that came upon him, he even said, what are we going to do? This is perilous. This is painful. This is perplexing. And we don't know what we're going to do. It says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. You know, when there is trouble, that's the time there should be unity. That's the time there should be an ingathering of all the people united together. It's a privilege to bring all the problems before the Lord. What a privilege that we have to be able to say, oh Lord, what a special time. That this heartache here and this trouble here and this harassment of the devil here and these enemies that are walking and this failure here and this defeat over here were bringing it to the Lord with a united heart. That's why it says, and the whole of Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. And that's why we're here to ask help of the Lord. And that help we're going to get in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, So our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. When you don't know what to do, you can pray and you can sing. When you don't know what to do, you can glorify the Lord and say you are the God of all wisdom and the God of all might and the God of all power and then praise the glory, the majesty of the Lord. When you don't know what to do, singing will be a wonderful thing. Singing the praises of the Lord. Singing the promises of the Lord. Just taking out of the word of God and just singing. Look at the Psalms and sing. And look at the Gospels and sing. And look at your hymn book and see. Just see where you, where you can't move forward or you can't move backward and you are hedged in. And it appears you are saying, what am I going to do? I've never found a problem like this in my life. I've never encountered something like this in my life. This is terrible. And this is peculiar. What a time to live. And when you are confused like that, I will say, what will I do? Where will I go? Who will bring the solution to me? That is the time to do what Paul and Silas did. And just to pray and to sing. And when there's no helper around. No prayer warrior around. No supporter around. Nobody that understands you. Or understands your problem. Nobody willing to give a helping hand. That will be the time to pray and to sing the praises of the Lord. They said in verse 12, O Lord our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon the Lord. I said our eyes are upon the Lord. Take your eyes away from the enemy and take your eyes away from the detractors and say, Lord, my eyes are upon you and I know you're going to solve my problem and the Lord will solve the problem in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. Verse 19. I hope that you have been blessed with this powerful message. Our, bottom, our address is at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh,
say it one more time, say, oh. 